Prestige is not your average pawnbroker's. Fantastic. More bags for Patrick. Supercars, jewellery, watches, fine wines, are almost anything of value. If it's expensive, we want it. With Surrey's Glitterati as clients, <laughs> they specialise in the sparkling. Oh, wow. That is a piece, isn't it? And the spectacular. This is what it's all about. This time, <laughs> there's vintage motoring. Jesus. And celebrity bling. There's about 700,000 crystals on this entire piece. What the hell is it? But talk of termination troubles the team. If I'm going to lose my job, I'll have to move on. Welcome to the world of posh porn. As a profession, pawnbroking is almost as old as money itself. It's Chanel's? Yeah. It's a present for my boyfriend. In comparison, businessman James Constantino is a relative newcomer. Could be in excess of 100 grand, easily. But his high-end pawn shop has cornered a niche market. We deal in these high-end assets that no other pawnbrokers will touch. That's absolutely gorgeous. We're taking anything high value as long as it's legal and not breathing. We don't do live objects. Oh, what a shame! Pawnbroking is completely different to a bank. Hello, ladies. Hello. You don't need credit checks. As long as you bring in an item that will cover your loan, you walk out with the money. In the UK today, pawnbroking is gaining in popularity. How much are you sort of looking to raise on it? As much as possible, really. But with that comes more clients with unrealistic expectations. I'm expecting hundreds. They'd offer you 1,750. Some of the clients don't realise the value of the item they've got. We'll probably offer you about 1,500. Hello. And like a new car, if you drive it out of a showroom, it diminishes in value. Another client who needs a reality check. It's Tuesday afternoon in Weybridge. OK, we'll look, we'll look forward to seeing it. It sounds amazing. Like and Boss people. James is dealing with an inquiry from Newcastle. That could be a good one. What was that? A woman called Helen is going to bring down some Stephen Webster jewellery. All right. Cost her ex-old man 185 grand. Bought it on a bit of a whim after going to one of his shows, so... I'm just going to go and get my lunch and uh, get myself an extra packet of crisps on a bit of a whim. This is exactly the reason why we're here. I mean, we see watches and rings and all sorts of on a daily basis, but when these bigger items come in, you know, for me, that's what it's all about, and we'll see if we can help her. The jewellery belongs to divorcee mum of three, Helen. My favourite part of the house, I think, is probably the, the tower at the top there. This is the family home set in over 20 acres of land. There was ten bedrooms in the house, vast amount of space, so we're very lucky, very fortunate. In here is Alexander's, my eldest son's bedroom, which is huge. That's the helicopter which my ex-husband used to fly to work every day, backwards and forwards, and he used to land the helicopter just out here on the helipad at the bottom here. But not anymore. The helicopter's gone and the house is on the market after her ex-husband's business went into administration. The children and I are having to move out of the property. The house is having to be sold. Boys, are you ready now? I was going to gain a very large lump sum of money through the divorce. All right, guys, have we got everything? Yes. But unfortunately, okay. I'm now left with absolutely nothing. Helen now lives in a two-bedroom apartment. Things have changed considerably for me now. I have four jobs, juggling jobs, taking the children to and from school. There's never enough hours in the day for me, that's for sure. I have had it all, really. I've had the private jets, the helicopters, Ferraris, you name it. We used to have it. But for Helen now, the priority is providing for her children's future. They absolutely love this school and it would absolutely break my heart if they had to come out of the private education. With school fees costing in excess of £15,000 a year per child, Helen is in desperate need of extra funds. My ex-husband bought this for me. We were invited to a private function, which was held in a local hotel. He surprised me at the end of the evening and said that he bought it. The diamond-encrusted necklace and earrings were designed by celebrity jeweller Stephen Webster. 
he did pay for the necklace alone over £185,000. And I, honestly, I was just totally, totally shocked. Couldn't believe it. And although it is very sentimental, the occasion was very special when I received it. But I do have priorities in life. And sorry, I forget what I'm getting upset. I'm hoping that I would gain a minimum of what the purchase price was for the actual necklace alone. So anything in excess of that would be absolutely fantastic. Jewelry and watches make up about half of the pawn shop's intake. Look, that stunning piece. Wow. But designer pieces like Helen's still make an impression on the team. Wow. That is a piece, isn't it? <laughs> High-end jewellery probably is one of the most easy money spinners for us as a business, and we see a lot of those pieces coming through the door. Very stunning piece of jewellery to show you. A very yeah. stunning piece. Uh, Stephen Webster. Okay. Yeah, you know him well. Wow. Oh, look at these. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Oh, wow. That's pretty <laughs> spectacular. I'm not even, even going to try and try that on, cos I don't think that'd get round my neck. <laughs> no. No. I mean, no. no. At first glance, oh, no. Helen's designer jewels look like they could make the pawn shop's month. The clients might think they've got the crown jewels, but at the end of the day, I must be able to sell those items on. It does look gorgeous and it is really unusual. Oh, I don't go on. <laughs> <laughs> Staff at the pawn shop know all that glitters is not gold. Oh, this is interesting, Monica. I think you'll like this is a bit of bling for you. And it's not just jewellery that has the ability to dazzle. This is a full, fully covered Swarovski crystal drum kit that was on the Carlywell Road Tour. Well, a real one? Yeah. Like the proper people... drums? Yeah. Look at that, all the Swarovski crystals in that. That is shiny. That's amazing, isn't that? Right, hang on, we can go to the link here. There it is, now, look at that. That's fantastic, isn't it? Imagine that on stage. I haven't got much of a music background, but I used to have a studio years ago. But if that Did gives you? me credit, yeah. Yeah. Did you know? No. <laughs> I had a recording studio for about two years. Wow. Ah, lots of things I've done over the years. Yeah. I won't tell you about my other industry I worked into. <laughs> <laughs> crystal-covered drum kit belongs to Danish superstar music producer Morton. A music producer is basically a, a person who, who put all the bits together, all the ingredients of the soup, if you like, and they take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and they mix it and they finish the soup and serve it. I work with Nelly, Rihanna, Pussycat Dolls, Cheryl Cole, Jennifer Lopez, Liberty X, Simply Red. It's been great fun. Drop it on your the studio where Morton is currently recording also boasts stellar credentials. The first album Adele ever did was recorded in this building. We've got Duran Duran upstairs, we've got Ben Hudson in today, Mark Ronson is, is, is coming, we had Symbol Minds in the other day. And there's lots of other up-and-coming producers, great producers here. There's a good creative hub here. That's how you create the best music. She's really a sweet dog, but she likes pool sticks. But the community here is under threat. A few months ago, we, we, we got noticed that uh, the owner of the, of the building had sold it on to property developers. We probably got between 12 and 18 months, and by then the, the whole community could be all over. I want to save it. We want to, we want to stay. To make his dream a reality, Morton is looking to sell another one of his creations. This is a top-of-the-range DW fully crystallised drum kit. It was handmade, every single crystal put on individually. There's about several hundred thousand crystals on this entire piece. There could be up to a million. This kit here was on tour with Kylie Minogue. It was on The X Factor. It was also featured in a video she did. Now, Morton hopes it will be instrumental in saving his music community. The solution is to sell the drums. Ideally, we would like to have a uh, hundred grand in seed capital to set up a, a new label, set up a publishing company, 
sign some fresh young talent and keep the community going. So all the pawn shop has to do is find a buyer interested in £100,000 worth of musical bling. With more millionaires per capita than almost anywhere else in the UK, Weybridge is the perfect place for a pawn shop dealing in luxury goods. You got the ring? But I bought it from the boutique in um, Harrods. People here earn more than the rest of us, and as a result, their valuables tend to be more valuable. James loves making money. It's what motivates him. I've never heard of a Lamborghini for 2.2 million. That is how he wants to spend his day doing a deal and making some money. Nice cheers. to see you. Thank see you. Cheers. Bye. Thanks. Bye. But for James, anything with an engine arouses more than professional curiosity. Here, I'll get a sniff of this. I have a rare vintage car, one of only three produced with bespoke body, 1934 Armstrong Sidley. Oh, wow. Oh, my God, I'd rather that than a Ferrari any day. Love that. I think that's really gorgeous. I like them old-fashioned cars more than those supercars that you like. I don't even like the smell of the insides for some reason. That is perverted. It's really easy to get overexcited about an item when it comes through the door. Oh, my God, I love it. And that can be dangerous. It can mar your judgment when it comes to the valuation. Can I go and see it? I want to smell it. Oh, my God, I'd love that. Welcome to Epping Forest and one of several homes of 51-year-old entrepreneur Lee. We'll get all the oak cleaned up, get all this power washed off, get all these posts here sorted out. Maybe a little bit of painting. 77-year-old Fred is Lee's handyman. He built this £3 million house for him in 2006. Actually, I bought him this little beaten-up old caravan. caravan that he had on site here yeah, and stayed yeah. in it while he was doing the work. Yeah. 200 quid, I think you paid for it. 250 pounds I paid for that caravan, actually, yeah, and I yeah. sold it for a profit. <laughs> <laughs> I like to find projects and things that interest Fred and keep you busy, don't I? Yeah, you certainly do. <laughs> oh, the old place looking nice inside, Lee. I think it's important to keep Fred active because he's been active all his life. Yeah. Oh, There's a little bit up there that needs sorting out, look. But their relationship isn't strictly business. Fred and Lee are father and son. I'm the worker, he's the cashier. <laughs> and this classic car has been one of Fred's many projects. It's a 1934 Armstrong Sidley fixed head doctor's coupe with a dicky seat in the boot. Look at that. It would make a fantastic wedding car. Just, can you imagine the bride putting the leg up here and cocking the leg over there? Look oh, like that. I could uh, imagine it. <laughs> the vehicle was painstakingly restored by Fred over a period of ten years. That is a photograph of it in a derelict state. I finished the car in 1990 and I have not really used it ever since. I haven't done 50 miles in it in 34 years. <laughs> Look, all them years. Now Fred and Lee have decided to sell their pride and joy in order to fund Fred's latest project. It's a 1959 Ford Escort estate. The money that we hope to get will help to restore this one. Because it's of its rarity, it could be worth £100,000. It could be worth £10,000. We don't really know. The, the more we get, the bigger the slush fund, the more fun that Fred has. More cars to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Whether an item is vintage or a modern classic, the pawn shop puts it through the same rigorous checks. Just because a client's telling you an item's worth a lot of money, you don't assume anything. The item may come with provenance and valuation, but we've always got to start from scratch and really do our checks on the pieces. With that in mind, today James is taking Helen's designer jewellery to his trusted diamond expert, Ian. Cheers. Hello, Jean. How are you doing? How are you? You all right? Good <laughs> yeah, to see you. you. Good to see you. It's been a while. Mmm, it has. What's in here? I've got some beautiful bits and pieces. This Amazing. is a, yeah, it's a wow. Stephen Webster piece. 
It's a good design. It's unusual, isn't it? It's different. The earrings, they're amazing. Yeah. It suits you. A bit of me, you think, Ian? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the earrings. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> you can't fault the quality of the stones. I mean, the quality is superb, you yeah. know. What's insane? saying? Platinum. 18 carat. 18 carat. I think she paid 185 grand for it, new. No. The necklace only, what do you think? Stephen Webster, don't get me wrong. Fantastic uh, manufacturer, designer. The quality in it you cannot fault. Fabulous. But like anything with a name on it, his, his stuff doesn't go rocketing up. Yeah, so what do you think? It's a beautiful piece. Somebody who wants that sort of thing will buy it, you know. So for the right money, we could find a buyer, but it'd have to be fairly competitive. Ian, it's been a pleasure. Well, let's see you again. Take Good to care. see you. Dry carefully. I'll be in touch. OK. Cheers, Ian. Thanks. Bye. Bye. The valuation has been mixed news for James. Quality's there, there's no doubt about it. It's a very individual piece, it's going to be a difficult one to sell. I've got a feeling that Helen's got some numbers in her head that might not be that realistic in this current climate. You know, the secondary market for those pieces is very limited. Not all the pawn shop's clients phone or email ahead, which means staff can be caught off guard by items that turn up unannounced. What on earth is this coming in? Nice pair of legs. What is it? It's a statue of a T600 from Terminator Salvation. Well, it's part of one anyway. This is the lower half. When he walked in, I was absolutely stunned. I couldn't believe what he was bringing through the door. The eyes light up. Does that light up? Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, so it does actually do something there. Yeah. Oh, it's not entirely headache. useless. There we go. Oh, there he is. He's back. Where did you get him from? Uh, I won him on an online competition. Are there other ones out there, though, of this? I've never seen one anywhere. So they're quite rare, then? Mm. Are you looking to sell it or just loan against it? Uh, sell it. You yeah. want to sell it, do you? Yeah, I'd love to keep it, but yeah. I just don't have the room. Cheers, thanks a lot. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, hopefully, um, with all the contacts, I'll be able to find someone who, who wants it. Fingers crossed, we shall wait and see what happens. Joe, do you want to come out and look at the new member of staff? What the hell is it? It's a Terminator. Does it isn't do it? anything? No. Doesn't well, it lights up. Me on Friday night, then. Well, it could protect you, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's um, going on down here? Well, that's his uh, piston. <laughs> it looks very uncomfortable. One minute there's a watch or a ring, which we kind of expect. Next thing, <laughs> you there's a Terminator. Terminator. Yeah, it's brilliant, though, isn't it? With client Ed hoping for at least £1,500, Patrick has his work cut out. Finding a buyer for a seven-foot Terminator is a real, real struggle. It's midweek, and James is dealing with another really? inquiry about diamonds. Oh, lovely. Well, it may take one or two days to value it, and we'll get back to you with an offer. We'd be down to see you. We'll give you a call in the next couple of days. OK, thank you, Doreen. Thanks, bye. That's Doreen. She's got some amazing jewellery. She's had them for 40 years, some of these rings. A massive ring of nearly five carats. It's the sort of thing could be worth a quarter of a million quid, could be worth a thousand pounds. She said... She uh, sounded really sweet. Yeah. She did have that nice old school sort of voice. Well, a bit like mine. Yours is definitely original, let's put it that I've way. I've got a lovely old school sort of voice, haven't I? You've got a very original tone. What do you mean? It stays in one tone. No, I don't. No, don't. Come on, Harley, let's check the post. 73-year-old Doreen is used to the finer things in life. It was always my ambition to have a nice car. I mean, I'm, I'm probably I'm a snob. I love being seen in a good car. From humble beginnings, she's lived a life of luxury and glamour, working in the beauty industry where appearance is everything. Inside, I still think of myself as being 21. I'm still wearing jeggings and fashion clothes. I don't think just because you're older you have to dress like a frump. <laughs> this is the big boy. Do you want your din-dins, smudge? Din-dins. Come on. In my life, I have been courted by a number of millionaires. There's Edward Kennedy, Fred Pontin, Billy Butlin, <laughs> Uh, Robert Maxwell, just to name a few. I only went out, really, with men at the top. I never went out with an ordinary working-class man, really. <laughs> but all that changed in her 50s when Doreen fell for her Spanish husband, Juan. 
I didn't get married until I was 52. He was such a kind man, so easygoing that I decided it was time. After several years living the high life in Spain, Doreen and her husband settled just outside London, looking forward to a long retirement together. There's a photo of us both only last year taken in Tenerife, you know, when he looked fit and well. Then they said he had a lung infection. He was in hospital work for Christmas, and then in January he went into a hospice. He died the 16th of January. I never expected him to die. I really didn't. And it was such a shock. It was so unexpected, really. But life goes on, so they really tell me. Come on, Harley. In the months since her husband's death, Doreen's been rethinking her priorities and has decided to move nearer to her sister and niece. He said it was his last wish to get yourself down to Kent to be with your family. To help fund the big move, Doreen's now decided to sell some of her jewellery. That one is a one and a half carat diamond. I bought that from Harrods in Knightsbridge. This I had made, and it's seven baguette diamonds that was cut from one stone. But this is a 4.4 carat diamond. That was a private sale I bought off of somebody that I knew who had got it as a present from a very rich Arab. If I could raise about 30,000 with the rings, that would help me to get a really nice bungalow. I want to see my little niece grow up. It's a new week at the pawn shop. Good afternoon, Prestige. And James has some news for Helen about an offer on her designer jewellery. Gone through to answering machine again. I'll try her again later. All right. Over the past few days, he's left messages for Helen and hasn't had a reply, but he's decided to call her one last time. Helen, this is James here from Prestige. Can you please give me a call regarding your um, pieces of jewellery, please? I don't know what happened with Helen. Sometimes clients change their mind, but usually they let you know. It can be very frustrating as we spend a lot of time on some of those pieces. Normally we get chased up, not having to chase them. <laughs> The offer we were able to present Helen with is probably disappointing. She had a figure of 185, which was roughly her purchase price for the item. It's unusual for it to happen at this late stage. James is rightly peed off, you know, to have um, invested time, effort. It's cost the business money. It's a dead duck, really, because um, there's no deal to be had, and I don't like not doing deals. <laughs> Timing couldn't be worse for James and Joe. Hold on a minute. Hello. With a new shop opening in London's Hatton Garden, every hour is precious. So we're open to open yeah. within six weeks. But there's a lot going on behind the scenes. It's all being rewired, stud work warning. So we'll see. <laughs> As operations manager, Joe is under pressure to find five new members of staff in under a month. The whole point of that is, please, let me have some decent CVs on my desk. But she's worried about whether she can work there herself. James definitely hasn't understood how much I'm dreading changing where I work. Right. See you later. Bye -bye. See you, thank Bye. you. Bye. Cheers. When he's really listened, I think he'll realise that I'm, I'm serious. Back at the office, Jo decides to deal with her concerns head on. First, I have to get myself to a train station, because it's not walking distance. Then I have to get myself on a train, get a ticket, get out, and then I've got to try and walk from there or go down into the sweaty tube. Do you know what? I'm welling up. You keep putting it off. I'm tired. I'll be in there three months going to you. We're going to talk about my position and package. You're not going to get anything out of me. <laughs> Joe is a very, very large part of the business and he needs to have her by his side and that's just the way it is. I want to work really hard for him but I don't want to commute. If I'm going to lose my job over it, I'll have to give it a go and if I can't, I'll have to move on and find him someone else. Do you have to sell these? Yes, that's yeah. fine, yeah. Being pawnbrokers to the elite can be a difficult job. 
With tough calls... Prestige. ..and awkward moments. It's uh, fake, unfortunately. Good grief. But today, James and Joe have got that Friday feeling. See ya. We we'll want to be ya. <laughs> can't believe I'm allowed to come on this. I can't believe it either. Keen to keep Joe sweet, James has decided to give her a special treat. He's taking her to test drive the 1934 classic car he's been asked to try and sell. It's really difficult with an item like a vintage car, especially like the Armstrong Sidley. Finding a buyer for those pieces are almost impossible. But owner Lee is hoping James can do just that. He wants £15,000 to fund his dad Fred's next project. How are you doing? Nice Hello, to Joe. meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Fred. All right. Yes, so How are you doing, good. James? We'll get the car out and I'm sure you're going to be uh, wowed over this one. All right, then. Let's have a look. <gasps> there she is. Oh, Thank my you. God. There it comes. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, wow. Look at the inside. Oh, it's so nice. Look at all the wood panelling. I'm going to have a little look at this bit. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Even the wheels are amazing. Yeah. It's made beautifully. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I want to have a go. I want to have a go in it. There you go, Joe. You'll be all right up there, won't you? Oh, thanks, yeah, Fred. Right, oh, oh, God. You can step on... Don't start. Are they strong? Shall I take my shoes off? No, no, you won't harm them. All right. Go on. Go on. Right, in you get. Oh, I say. Oh, my God, something went. You driving, James? I'd love to drive. I'm yeah, is that all right? You can. On. By all means. As soon as you drive away, flick it in the second. And you, you change gear by dipping the clutch. So I'll push it up first, then I'll dip the clutch. Yeah. Woo! I hope you've got a long arm when we turn left. Why? Right. It's got no signals. <laughs> James, do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Promise? You're all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Just make sure you don't brake too quick. Don't forget to release the air brake. And no. watch where you're going. Don't keep looking round. Yeah. Woohoo! Come on! Woohoo! <laughs> Bye. Here we go. Turn it left. Yeah, you do the hand signal. <laughs> 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 this is absolutely amazing. I love classic cars, but this is the oldest thing I've ever been in, and it's a real task to drive it. Left. I've gone the wrong way. Keep going round, straight up. No. It is, I promise you. Are you trying to be in reverse? Oh, God, blimey. I don't think this suits you. Suits me. Toot these people! <laughs> <laughs> as far as I was concerned, I was on a sunny Sunday afternoon, bouncing along country lanes, <laughs> looking out for a good spot to go <laughs> have a picnic. <laughs> How are you doing? Luckily for us, uh, James didn't have the same mentality. Jesus. I've got to find someone, basically, with 15 grand to spend on a, a classic car, which uh, isn't easy in this market. Being one of only three in the, in the world, I mean, that's amazing. Not in the country, in the world. I'm sure there's going to be someone out there for this. <laughs> <laughs> Armstrong Sidley. What a lovely thing. It didn't crash it. It felt good, actually. I've never driven anything quite well, this old. It's not been used for 12 years. It needs using now. That was good. <laughs> You're all right in the back, Oh, there? my God, I could stay here. I could literally let you do that all day long, round and round. I think she's welded in that seat. Am, am I going to get out? <laughs> <laughs> my bum's wet. It's wet a, when you got in. It, no, it's the plastic seats, and I've got a pet little slip-on under this. Ready? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is a fantastic thing. It's been a great day out. Obviously, this is a rare thing, so it's going to need yeah. some work. And we'll make some calls and see if we can get it done for you. Yeah. Cheers, Lee. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers, Fred. Thanks Bye. very much. Nice Cheers. Nice to meet you. And, and you, Fred. Thank you. you. Bye. Nice All to best. meet you. But do you think I could maybe come on a few more of these gallivants? Mm, I don't know. It depends how well you behave on the way back. <laughs> Selling specialist items such as classic cars can be hard work for the pawn shop. 
We've got, uh, Peter, a very rare Armstrong Sidley, a Maltby bodied car, one of only three. In contrast, jewellery is usually relatively easy money. Over at the Richmond branch, resident gem expert Kristin has been looking into Doreen's diamond rings. I think we may struggle to get the 20,000 mark because the clarity is quite poor on the biggest one, which would have been where the most money was. Widow Doreen's hoping the sale of her rings will help fund moving house. She's just a nice wee old lady. It would be nice to be able to help her out. Keen to get a second opinion, Kristin's heading back to diamond expert Ian. Hello, Ian. Hello. How are you? Oh, good. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Mm. So the first one is around four and a half carats, just mm. under. That's a terrible star. Yeah, it actually is that bad, isn't mm. it? It is bad. If that was a really good yeah, colour, 50,000, whatever, yeah. you know. And I think she just thinks massive carat weight because she bought it herself years ago. The thing is, they go into a high street shop and they paid way over the top. And that is why when they yeah. come to pawn it... Yeah, they expect the same price. I yeah, don't know. and yeah. they don't get it. I always say to people, buy second hand. I never buy brand new, because I know... Because you save a yeah. fortune. Yeah, I'm hoping you're going <laughs> to tell me some good news on this one. This one is 1.5 carat. It's a pretty ring. Yeah. It's very saleable. Yeah. Lovely engagement ring for yeah. a young girl. Yeah, definitely. Suit your yeah, hand my Street swap. <laughs> <laughs> and last one, little platinum, half eternity. It's a clean ring. Mm. It is platinum. Mm. Seven baguettes. Yeah, it's quite Good heavy. quality. Yeah. Really chunky, mm. really nice. Well, thanks very much. Pleasure, Good my time. darling. OK. Nice to see you. <laughs> Take, Take care. care. Take care. All the best. OK. Ian's evaluation has certainly given Kristen food for thought. Sometimes clients buy watches and jewellery as an investment, but it's not always a good bet. Um, you'd really have to know your stuff. When people go and buy something retail, what they're paying for is the retailer's overheads, staffing costs, etc. But the reality of it is the real value of the item is a lot, lot less. With diamonds, the value is always based on the four Cs, the colour, the clarity, the cut and the carat weight. It's not all about the size. It doesn't matter how big your rock is. If it's not a good quality stone, it's not worth much. <laughs> Valuing diamonds might be that straightforward, but there's no such formula for a crystal-covered drum kit. We're finally going to get to see this amazing drum kit, so I'm really looking forward to that because, you know, it really is a piece of art. Morton's looking for 100,000. It's quite a lot of money for a drum kit. Most drum kits are only between two and 7,000. This is way, way above that. Ah. Patrick! <laughs> you must be Morton. Yes, nice to, to meet you. Me. Nice you to too. meet you. you finally get to see it. Yes. Oh, wow. There it is. Oh, that's a bit understated, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. My God. Well, I've seen the pictures of them, obviously, but when you actually see them in the lighting, it must have been amazing on tour. What, what are these made of them? They're actually oh. Sildjian symbols, platinum coated. Are they really? Come on. Well, that's actually a stunning piece, isn't it? How long did it take you to do it? It took me three years to do, and I didn't eat. No, it didn't. Uh, yeah. No, it... Oh, that's why you're so slim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, it was like 10 to 15 people over three months. When this went on tour, did the did the management not want to buy the drum kit, or did you hire it, or what did you do? I, I hired it to them. So they just At hired the time, it, did they? At the time, they didn't yeah? really want to sell it because we only made one. Really impressive, yeah. Well, what I'll do, if it's OK with you, I'm going to have a really good look at it now. I've got an expert coming to look at it and value it as well. Sounds good. All right, great. Thanks, Patrick. Thank good to yeah. meet you, yeah? See you later. See you later. Bye. I think Patrick was quite impressed with the craftsmanship. I think he loved it, and he, he seemed very enthusiastic, so hopefully he'll sell it for me. While Patrick starts his search for a buyer in earnest, James has finally got some news about the vintage Armstrong Sidley for owners Lee and Fred. I feel a little bit apprehensive, not knowing too much what to expect, really. I'm hoping it's going to be good news, so we'll wait and see. Yes. Hello. Is Lee there, please? Oh, speaking. How are you, mate? It's James here. Ah, oh, James. Hi. Thanks for your patience. As you know, this car is extremely rare. Yeah, yeah. To find examples that are sold is nigh on impossible. Yeah, I can understand that. When I first spoke to you, you said you were looking for 15 grand. Would that be the bottom line on it? I'd like a bit more than that. Right. Where did you get to the figure of 15 from? I gave my dad 15 ten years ago, so I would like to have seen... <laughs> 
uh, maybe a return on that investment. But I know it's very difficult. Um, but how, how did you get on? We spoke to uh, Bewley Museum. We spoke to a lot of people. We searched high and low for a buyer, and it wasn't an easy task to get someone to actually put their hands in their pocket. Our investigation, people in the know felt that it was slightly underpowered, which made it not quite as desirable as some of the other cars. But we did try private collectors as well. We have got someone who would be interested in purchasing at 10 grand. That's well below what we would accept for it. Right, OK. That's disappointing, really. It's certainly not strong enough for us to let it go. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't yeah. help you with well, it. Well, that's yeah. the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Thanks for your efforts then, James. James. Cheers, Lee. Yeah. Thank you. Bye now. Cheers, mate. Bye. Well, that's really disappointing. The collector is prepared to pay £10,000, um, but they struggle to pay any more. You don't always get your money back. You know, you can throw thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of pounds at some of these classic cars and very rarely will you get a return on your money. It's oh. a, a sad result, well, but you know, we're not going to not going to no. let it go just no, I'd rather for that, is it? I'd rather sit in the garage for another 50 years. Good afternoon, oh, Prestige. With a disappearing client and no sale on the classic car, it's been a difficult couple of months for the pawn shop. He's just busy with a client at the moment. Can I take a message? And the prospect of a long commute to the new London headquarters is still bothering Joe, despite James's offer of a pay rise. Train times are frustrating. There is one that I will just miss every single day. But anyway, generally, you're all right. Are you? Oh, in time to get there, train. Joe. 15 minutes more. Joe. What about when the guys are really fully trained? Joe. What? Generally, you're happy with the size of my package. <laughs> yes, thank you. You are? Yeah. So you're on board? Yeah. That's what I like to hear, Joe. High five. I'm not doing a high five. What I'll about a low five? No, I'll shake your hand. All right, so you're happy with it, yeah? Yes, thank you. All right, well, look, yeah, you've done the right thing and uh, you should be very proud of yourself. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, mm. See you later, I'm Get going back. Sure. That must have hurt. <laughs> James is not the only one with a bit of a headache. Patrick has been struggling to find the manufacturer of a seven-foot Terminator model. Copyrighted to the Halcyon Company. It's got its height, which is 195 centimetres. Material is fibreglass, LED lights for his eyes. It's not available anymore. So that might add some more interest to it and obviously maybe increase the value as well. With memorabilia, it's all about the exclusivity of the item and what someone will pay for it. Do you know anyone around that actually deals in them or buys them? You don't. I could hear Patrick doing his research. Yeah, speaking the English. And I actually sat there and thought, I've got a mate who might want that. Patrick, how are you doing with the Terminator? I mean, we've had a few sort of potential offers, but nothing firm. Right, well, I've actually got some good news. I've got an right. offer from someone. He's a cash buyer. Oh, really? Good. I've got in an email. I'm going to ping it over to you. Give the client a call and put the offer to him and uh, try and get the deal done, yeah? Up in Yorkshire, waiting patiently for news, is the current owner of the Terminator, Ed. Having not heard anything, I don't know if it's going to be good, if it's going to be bad, but if I can get somewhere around about you know, 1000 1500 for it, it'll be brilliant. I wouldn't buy it. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> it's a bit ugly. It's a lot ugly, actually. It's a funny thing to have sitting in a, in a room, you know, seven foot two or Terminator looking at you all day long. Well, I'm now going to ring the client and actually tell him, and hopefully he'll be happy with what we're going to offer him. Hello. Hello, is that Ed? It is, yes. Hi, Ed. Uh, Patrick from Prestige. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, fine, thanks. I'm sorry I've been so long coming back to you on this one. That's quite right. Um... It's been very interesting, I have to say. It's one of the funniest things I've had to deal with. <laughs> you gave me the details of the Australian people, so I rang them. And they've actually stopped production of it. I yeah. then phoned the distributors in Germany. Uh, they don't have the licence anymore. So they don't make it anymore. And then I got onto all the prop houses as well. Right. After all that, I can actually make you an offer. For now. Really? 
What sort of figure are you looking for on this? I was hoping for somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500. Um, what I can offer you... Two and a half thousand. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm over the moon. Wow. <laughs> That's about twice what I thought I'd be. Oh, really? Thank you very much oh, indeed. You're very welcome, mate. Good talking to you. And you I'm too. Hopefully your wife's not too disappointed that it's leaving you. I'm sure she'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Harry. Right. Thank, Thank you. you mate. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know I wanted between 1,000 and 1,500? Yes. Two and a half grand. <laughs> He was absolutely delighted, actually. He, was, he couldn't believe, actually, that we were offering him that sort of money. I'm a bit shocked, if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon at that. It's a brilliant result. He sat in his boxes without complaint, and now he's made me a load of money. <laughs> Job done! Prestige. Back at the pawn shop, Kristen's arranged to meet pensioner Doreen to give her a price for her diamond rings. But first, she needs to consult with boss James. Hello. Hi. You all right? How are you doing? Yeah, good. You all right? Yeah, not bad, not bad. How much does she think? She's looking for 30,000. She's talking in pounds or rupees. Yeah, price. <laughs> but what if it was stone? a good stone, if you, it would, was a nice you one, would be looking at 70, 100,000 maybe. Yeah. All right then, so you're so... going to relay the news to her? Yeah, but I was thinking you might help me. You want me to do the dirty <laughs> stuff No, to but it'll be better coming from you. Good morning, Hello, Hello, James. Hello, James. Nice Hello. to meet you. Thank you. you. Grab a seat. Thank you very much. Kristen has been looking after you, hopefully. Yes, she has. Yeah. Doreen, why, um, why are you unloading all this stuff at the moment? Well, really, because now my husband's died, I was thinking of moving to a smaller house. Um, I would like to get a bungalow probably down in Kent, where my family are. But I've been looking at a couple, but they're, they're quite expensive. It really makes me feel uncomfortable when I'm listening to someone tell me just how much they need the money. Nervous. Don't be nervous. No, no. Oh. Um, so we had a closer look at them. I, had, I cleaned them, and I had a look under the diamond light where you can see everything perfect inside it. The big one, I was pinning my hopes on a lot of money on this, because if this was a good quality stone because of the size of it. Size. Um, and it isn't, no? It's not. That's the bad news, Dwayne. Yeah, well. the inclusions in it are bad, and it's got a big fracture in the middle. Is it? Yeah, Gosh. and that devalues yeah. it quite a lot. Um, oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, it's a shame. Cause that one. This was a nice wee one, 1.5 carat. That's a lot cleaner. That stone was a good oh. stone. This one's also a nice wee ring. The diamonds in that are good quality too. Yeah. So, with this one, the offer is three thousand. The smaller one, again, 3,000 and 1,000 on the half eternity ring. In total, you're looking at 7,000 as an offer to buy all three. I know it's nowhere near what you were thinking. No, I just thought it was worth more than that. Best let them go, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's... I'd let them go. You're going to let them go? I think so. I don't want you to feel pressured. No, not at all. No pressure. I have no children to pass them on to. If, if my niece had them, she'd only sell them anyway. They're not so, sentimental at no. all. No. Mm. OK. Sure. Well, yep. we'll get Lawrence to, or Kristen, to write out the paperwork, mm -hmm. and we can transfer funds into your straight account away. straight away today. So that's no. really good. That's yeah. good. But I'm sorry it's been disappointing to you, and uh, we'd have to relay that news to you because it's not an easy task no. by any means. Never mind. Never mind. Oh. Sorry. Right, thanks for coming in, Doreen. Yeah. Good Thank to see you. you, and we'll get the money Thank over you. to you. It's nice to see you again. Cheers. Bye. 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 See you. Seven thousand pounds will go towards the expenses involved in buying the bungalow. So at least that's seven thousand more than what I had when I came. It's really difficult, you know, when you've got a client here who believes her items are worth a lot more than they actually are worth, and to relay that news back to the client is always quite difficult, especially when they're so lovely like she is. That big stone, there's not really a market for it, so it's going to be even difficult to sell the money that we've offered. Hoping for better news is music producer Morton. He's been looking to sell his crystal-covered drum kit to fund setting up a new record label. It's going to be interesting to see what, what Patrick has to say when he calls. 
is a really unique piece. It's not an easy sell. You can't just find a buyer out the air. I've been asked to sell some things in my life, but a, you know, a diamond encrusted drum kit. You know, it's not for everybody. Hello. Hello. Oh, is that Morton? It is. Hi, Patrick. Right, how's things? Not bad. I'm just doing a little trek here. Um, right, well, okay, well, look. Uh, uh, a bit of news anyway. Um, okay. I said to you at the time, you know, it's not going to be an easy sell. Yeah. That, that definitely has been the case. I mean, I've spent a lot of time and done some research. You've gone through it all. Yeah. Um, and I know you were looking for a figure of... 100,000 on it. Yeah. Although it's unique, it's it's even harder to find a buyer for it if you think in one way because it is so unique. Right. It's not like there's ten of them out there. There's only one of them in the world, yeah. really. So um <clears throat> This morning um we had some emails in and we had a uh, an agent approach us this morning uh -huh. who's actually come in with a, a a bid for it. Okay. Well basically you were looking for a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, that's what the bid is. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Patrick, you're, you're the man. <laughs> Am I? Wow. Oh, you're impressed? You're the best. <laughs> you're the best in the business. I wouldn't say I'm the best. <laughs> I'm pretty good at selling things like... Unique. Wow. That's incredible. You're such a dude. <laughs> good. Well, I'm glad you're pleased. Uh, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll wow. give you all With all the details okay. and we get it, we'll get it moving. Okay, brilliant. All right. Thanks a lot, Patrick. Thanks a lot, Morton. Good talking to you. Thanks a lot, Ed. Bye. Bye. <laughs> he smashed it. Get out of it! He's a lovely guy. Um, he was a real pleasure to me. And, uh, no, I'm really pleased for him, really pleased for him. The future's looking a little bit more sparkly. <laughs> or slightly less, maybe. The future looking great. I can set up the music company, we can get on with stuff. It's amazing. We stole the drums! We got it!